Hello. All right. In this video, we are going to be looking at how you get data from Google BigQuery. I thought it was going to be more tricky than it actually was. Once I got into it, figured a couple of things out, I realized it's quite simple and you should definitely do this. Now you would use Google BigQuery if you have huge data sets or if your organization uses that to store most of its data in and you might need to access or might want to access it directly. Now you can using these notebooks in Python and this awesome little module that somebody made for us. So first thing we need to do is load some data into BigQuery because I haven't got any data in BigQuery. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I just Googled this actually. Um, load CSV into BigQuery. And the reason why is I can never find it in the navigation. So I just do it this way. I think it's this one that's the easiest. We get to this page. And then we scroll down and we just go to this. Ah, so the URL is bigquery.cloud.google.com. And it kind of takes you to this console. You'll see down the left hand side, there's actual data sets that you can play with, but that's totally up to you. If, if you want to load in your own data, you can do that. To load in some data, you go to, so I'm using a profile, a Meritrix profile, which is my business. And we're going to create a new data set for Meritrix. I'm going to call it Facebook test. Um, and that's the, the data set ID is going to be Facebook test. And to keep things simple, oh, the next thing we do is we have to create a table within that database. And we're going to call this table, the table name, we're going to call that Facebook test just to keep things consistent. What we want to do is we want the system to automatically detect the header of the column so we don't need to think about that stuff. So if we check automatically detect, all these options disappear, which makes our lives a lot better. And then the next thing we do is, so we're selecting file format, we can JSON, whatever. Um, but we're gonna go with CSV, we're gonna choose file. I'm gonna pick the biggest one here because I believe that one's got the most data. I'm gonna upload it. And this is how easy it is, create table. Obviously, if you've got huge data, this is gonna take a bit more time. So you've got data in BigQuery now. That's awesome, so there's the tables there. We need a tool now to be able to access this data. And that tool is Pandas Google BigQuery or GBQ. And as usual, when you want to install something, you Google it, conda install pan, that's not how you spell pandas, pandas Google BigQuery. And you'll get this, but I went to the official documentation and if we go to install installation and hit conda, presuming you're using the conda management package, copy that, open up a new terminal, or if you're in Windows, it's Anaconda prompt, run. Now I've already got it installed, so I don't need to do this. It'll run, you hit yeah, you hit Y, and it'll install it, and then it'll be perfect over there. So I'm gonna close terminal. So we've did that. Next thing we do is we go back to the notebook. Same as usual, you need to import the modules you're going to use. So import pandas underscore GBQ, that'll load it. Uh, we're going to do the magic features, I think they're called or something. I can never remember what they're called, but these little uh, percent signs and then a little bit of code and it allows you to view uh, charts inside the notebook. So let's load that. Ignore this error. It's just the notebook being daft. Now, um, you need to tell Google BigQuery what project you're trying to access. So in this case, I've got access to multiple projects, but this is the Meritrix project and you'll see that up here. So if you're looking for that number, it's there. Um, sorry, that uh, project ID. So I'm just creating it as a variable because it makes it easier to read. There we go. Next thing is we want to create a data frame with the data from Google BigQuery. This is when you should get all the, the kind of authentication um, the authentication um, process coming up. So if we hit return, I've had to install and uninstall this a few times to try and get the process working right. So I'm hoping it will give me, oh, it didn't give me the full process. So what will happen is it will pop up, click this link, and then you copy 
the it'll either i think it'll automatically do it actually you click the link and it will basically validate your account it will start you put, putting you through a validation process and linking it to the account once you've did that you'll never need to do it again uh, hence why i can't recreate it once you so in here so what you want to do is you want to select everything so the star means everything from the database facebook underscore test and the table facebook underscore test Right? And the project ID that you're looking in is the Metatrix one here. And the dialect legacy, I can't remember why I set this, but I was having problems. You might not need it, but I was having problems and I found a solution to be to set that. So we've loaded the data. Let's, let's have a look at it. See how simple it was. Obviously, the speed will vary depending on how much data you're trying to load. We're not loading very much, actually. Let's see how much data we did load. Shape is always handy. 1300 rows, 15 columns. Let's look at that head. There we go. A data frame as you would expect from pandas. And you can even draw a scatter plot should you want. No, nope, you can't because Nick didn't set that right. Long fingers in the place. It should draw it. Maybe it's not wanting to draw it. Oh, I'll tell you why. Looks like I had, I couldn't ignore that warning. So there we go. That is how you access data from Google Big BigQuery. So if somebody's giving you access, all you need from them is the project ID and to have access to that project, um, the database name and the table in the database, and you can start messing around with it. Um, obviously, this is selecting everything, but if you only want a subset, you can select a subset. This is where understanding SQL a little bit will come in handy. From there, you can, you can do what you like, essentially. So. Hopefully this was useful. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. We've got to cater to the algorithm, so comment, like, share. Let's get more traffic to these videos. I've got a big, big, big series coming up in January, so that's why I've been quiet, because I need time to plan it and write the notebooks. But keep your eye out for January. By December, I'll have more information. So like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, whatever. See you all next time. Ciao.